Hi, my name's Sue Searle and I'm Principal Ecologist at Ecology Training UK. Welcome to this video about identifying common species of trees. I've put them in alphabetical order, so if you want to come back to them, you will be able to find them a little bit easier. Hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you at the end. Bye. Here is our first tree, it's the common alder, and this one is on a river bank. You can see the leaves are quite oval with a little notch at the end. They're fairly glossy as well. We've got some more here and you can see that they have these little tiny cones. The green ones are the ones from this year and the brown ones are the ones from last year. And they retain those over the winter so it's really easy to identify them in the winter as well. The leaves are quite glossy, the veins are parallel and usually found by riverbanks. This tree is ash, so ash has what we call a pinnate leaf, so the whole of this is a leaf and it's, it's got a central stem and then these little leaflets going off the edge. In the winter the buds of the leaves are black, so that's one way you can remember black leaves. I always remember ashes and fire and charcoal and stuff, so black ash buds. This is quite a small tree. Um, there's a bigger one in the background, so they, they do grow to big canopy trees. So this, this big tree here is an ash and so is this one. They are succumbing at the moment to ash dieback. Uh, so there's a little dead tree here that has died of ash dieback. Uh, but this one looks healthy at the moment. Another ash tree and here you can see the ash keys. So these things are the seeds. Let's see if I can grab one. So that's the seeds. It makes them very good colonizers actually. And they're called keys. And you can clearly see the black bud at the end. Where is it? hidden there you can see the black bud at the end of the stem and the pinnate leaves um, this is the bark it's quite sort of grayish and smooth grayish green The first thing you'll notice with aspen, especially if there's a light breeze, is this fluttering of the leaves. And it's very, um, very distinctive. The leaves are quite roundish. They look like they've been cut out by a cookie cutter. And the bark is smooth and gray. It's an aspen leaf and you can see it's sort of a little bit heart shaped, a slight point and it's got a wavy crenellated edge to it. Sometimes they're more rounded without this point further up the tree. I love this lime green of early beech leaves. So this is mid-April and they've just come out and they're really furry around the edge and you can see the parallel veins and the zigzag arrangement along the stem. What a stunning colour though. So it's late July and we've got some beech nuts starting to develop. They open out into a four-sided, almost flower-shaped um, thing with the little nut inside. beech nut time. They eventually open up like a flower and these nuts in the middle are quite nice if you can get through that thick shell. And it's really soft and furry as well that bit. This is blackthorn and it's really difficult to identify 
in the summer, but in the winter it has huge thorns on it. So it just has a, a little sort of ovoid leaf with serrated edges. And if you look into the older growth, these are actually the thorns that you will see in the winter, like really large thorns, like this one. But they have the leaves and the flowers on the thorns, so it kind of looks like a branch, but it's actually quite, quite uh, rigid and thorn-like. And then in the winter, it's just these really strong thorns. It also has uh, slow berries, so if you like making slow gin, you want to try and find some of these and pick your slows. It often has a purplish stem as well, so you can see here how the stem is quite purplish. And it's just uh, a scrubby shrub, really. Here we've got some black thorn in flower and the flowers are going over a bit now and the leaves are coming out. But usually with hawthorn, the flowers come out after the leaves and with black thorn, the flowers come out before the leaves. So the flowers will come out in the spring around May time. Sometimes it's called May blossom and the whole bush will be covered in blossom. Very pretty actually. cherry and cherry has this elongated leaf and serrated edges also at the base of the leaf they have this strange little sort of red nodules can you see those little red nodules there so the leaf is pretty nondescript but those red nodules are very good identification features and then just in here you can see a cherry forming so the cherries are on stems and um, they have beautiful blossom in the spring. So cherry can become quite a, a large tree, but not a huge, huge tree. This is dogwood in flower. You can see it's got a nice little creamy white flower with four petals. The leaves are quite um, ovoid and the veins go round the edge of the leaf. These will turn into blackberries in the autumn and usually you find this on calcareous ground, so in chalk and limestone areas. Elder. Elder has a pinnate leaf, so this is the leaf, all of this. So it has a central stem and then leaflets coming off it. So that's the whole leaf. It's serrated around the edges with a point on the end. And in the summer, it has these lovely flowers. You can make elderflower cordial and elderflower wine out of these. And then in the autumn, they have beautiful black berries, like a bunch of berries. This is the buds. It's not a big tree. Um, it does have some very distinctive bark, actually. If you look at the bark, it has these funny little dots on it. Can you see these dots? Also, the stem is hollow and filled with pith. And they used to use these to make penny whistles and whistles because you can um, take the branch, um, cut it, poke the pith out of the centre, and you've got a tube. 
And here are the berries, they're not quite ripe, they usually go a bit more black than this. This is elm. Elm is roughly hairy, so can you hear how rough it is when I do that? It also has a serrated edge, so double serrated edge to the leaf. And if you actually pick one of the leaves, you'll see that at the base of it, one of the lobes is lower down the stem than the other. So that's elm. So this is a little baby oak tree and this one is an English oak. So if you look closely at the leaves, they are lobed. And then at the base, they have a very short stem with these frilly lobes at the bottom. If they have acorns, the acorns are on a long stem. So this one will eventually become a canopy tree. This is an English oak and it's starting to form some acorns and you can see the acorns are on very long stems so that's another sign that it's an English oak and that's why it's also called the pedunculate oak because a peduncle is a long stem and here you can see the fully formed acorns here we've got field maple so it's a a little maple like leaf. It is our only native maple and it has the little helicopters that other maples have. You can see they're almost in a straight line instead of a V shape. So that's the seeds. They're quite a small tree. Look at this beautiful little flower of the field maple. It's going to become helicopters later on in the autumn. I think this is one of our most beautiful wild plants actually and it's called Gelder Rose. It has a sort of lobed leaf and it has these absolutely gorgeous white flowers and it can grow to a sort of medium sized shrub and in the autumn it has lovely red berries sort of glossy shiny red berries it's a really stunning shrub isn't it i love this plant Here's hawthorn and it's got a small lobed leaf so you can see it's got deep indentations in it and it has white flowers in the spring but um, then in the autumn it kind of goes into these little red berries so these are in the rose family they do look a little bit like rose hips sometimes the leaves also have a bract at the bottom so you can see this little leaflet thing at the bottom here and they have short thorns as well so there's a little thorn just here if you can see that just in there okay so this is a small tree or a shrub A great source of berries in the winter for the birds. Here we have some hawthorn. So the flowers have come out after the leaves. As you can see, there's leaves already out. And the flowers are quite prolific, quite small, with lots of stamens, and they're in the rose family. We can tell this is hawthorn because the, the, 
the main stems have short thorns on them. This one is hazel. So hazel has a softly furry leaf and it's double serrate on the edge so you can be, see big serrations and then smaller serrations inside. Often has this little point on the end. It's a multi-stemmed tree so it always has multi-stems. And we get hazelnuts from this can't see any on this particular tree. Here on this hazel you can see that the leaves are alternate and they almost create a zigzag up the stem and you have these softly furry leaves and quite furry stems as well. Here we've got some hazelnuts on the hazel tree. obviously holly and you can see the spiky leaves usually got a sort of yellowish um, vein down the middle but sometimes hollies can be spikeless so here as you go up the tree it tends to become less spiky because the spikes are to stop predators or herbivores and they have no need to create the spikes so look out for these glossy leaves and then you should find the odd spiky one just to help you identify that it is a holly. They have male and female flowers um, on separate trees so the tree is either male or female and if you have a female you'll get your red berries, if you have a male you won't get any berries. a hornbeam and a lot of people get this one mixed up with beech because it has these parallel veins but it has much more frequent parallel veins and it's got a double serrated edge to the leaf. It does have some strange seeds um, which hang down in festoons and it has a smooth greyish bark and it's often quite a neat compact tree with a compact shape. If I just show you this one, it's in a car park actually. <laughs> and there's several of them in this car park. So often the branches are, are straight up like this. So that's a hornbeam. And here's a picture of the seeds. As you can see, they hang down in festoons. This magnificent tree in a park is a horse chestnut. Let's get a t closer look at it. So they have these almost candle-like upright flowers and these huge green uh, palmate leaves that look almost like green hands hanging down. Later on in the year, unfortunately, these will be infested with leaf miners and they'll just look brown and crinkled up. So we'll make the most of this lovely tree in the spring. Here we've got some little conkers starting to form and you can see the spiky seed cases. These will get much bigger as the year progresses. Here we have some conkers a bit more mature and as you can see on the leaves we're starting to get the brown leaf mines which are the blight of this poor species at the moment. And this is what the horse chestnuts look like later on in the year when the leaf mines have taken a hold. This is a, a moth, that's caterpillar that's doing this and it's eating the leaf between the two layers, the upper layer and the lower layer, leaving a mine which basically kills the leaf and it's happening all over the UK.
It's really shocking to see them like this. This is a magnificent lime tree. They do grow quite large. Here you can see some lime flowers. Very nice scent actually and very rich in nectar. So good for pollinators. And you can see that it has heart-shaped leaves. And the flowers are a kind of, well, the flowers have gone to seed now. So that's not really a flower. They're like little uh, balls of um, seeds. But there's this strange bract on the, um, on the flower. So you can see that. Oh, come back. The wind's blowing. <laughs> so on the flower, you've actually got this. Let me just pick that. You've got this strange bract-like thing. And that's just hanging down. And then you've got these heart-shaped leaves. When it is in flower, it's usually very, very um, good for providing nectar. And it's absolutely buzzing with bees. There are some different species of lime and one of the ways to distinguish them is to look underneath the leaf and the junctions of the veins here have different coloured hairs on them. So you can see here they're kind of creamy coloured. This tree is absolutely massive, this a huge London plain. And there's even a gap for the cars to drive through where the road goes next to it. It's amazing. Now this tree can look like a sycamore or a maple, but it's got these balls on strings instead of helicopters. And if you look at the leaves, they are maple-like, but um, just look out for those seeds. They are very different in the London Plain. This species is Norway maple, and the leaves have a, a much more pointed edge to them. The, these are much more pointy than in the sycamore, plus the stems can be reddish but they tend to be more greenish usually. Here you can see in the top right a comparison with sycamore. Here we've got the helicopters or the, the seeds of the Norway maple and you can see that they are a V shape so they're kind of in a V shape. a rowan tree. They don't grow very big but they have pinnate leaves and orange berries. So you can see here the pinnate leaf and the leaves have some quite large serrations on the edge as well. So that's rowan. And you can see by the bark, it's quite a pale, plainish bark, greyish. And this is also rowan. This one is a silver birch. So we have a diamond shaped leaf with serrated edges, quite sort of glossy as well. 
and they often have catkins can't see any on this one but the bark is very distinctive you can see it has this white bark with the black markings on it so it's quite a distinctive tree they don't grow very big but they are also pioneer trees so they do tend to be the ones that find bare ground easily and colonize bare areas so that's the silver birch there are some catkins on the silver birch they do elongate quite a bit so these are quite short and stubby at the moment This tree here is spindle, so it just has a normal sort of oval leaf shape. It's got little creamy four petaled flowers. And in the autumn, it has bright pink seed pods and inside are bright orange seeds. It's a very indistinct plant, actually. Um, but usually the bark is green on, on the stems and the bark's green on the older stems as well. So I don't know if we can see that in this one because it's on a hedge, but you can see here some greener bark and this is obviously older growth here. So look out for the green bark. Here the spindle berries are starting to form. They're still green at the moment. Strange shape, aren't they? Here you can clearly see the green bark going right up into the older wood, right up into here. So look out for the green bark on older wood. That's a spindle tree. It's actually an ancient woodland indicator, uh, so you often find it in ancient woodlands and old hedgerows. And here's the spindle berries when they're nearly ripe, so they're much more orangey. Here we have a sweet chestnut. This is a really old one and it's absolutely massive. It has striated bark and sometimes it's, it's twisted. And the leaves are elongated and serrated on the edges and those little spikes are the flowers. Here's a very large sweet chestnut tree and it's fully in flower and you can see it's actually very attractive to bees. It's like a long stalk of little flowers with lots of stamens on it. And you can see it's got fairly glossy lanceolate leaves with serrated edges and parallel veins and here's the seed it's um, like a, I always think it looks like little hedgehogs it's a very spiky seed case which splits open and reveals a sort of furry inside and an edible nut inside as well which you can roast on the fire and uh, very popular at Christmas. We've got sycamore, and sycamore is a maple. You can see it's got quite large maple-like leaves, red stems, usually on the stems there. Leaves are in pairs, so that's a very distinctive thing about the maples. It can grow to a very, very big tree. So this one's not too big. And as with all the... Here we've got the seeds of the sycamore. And you can see they're in a, a bit of a V shape and that they have these wings on them which help them to fly. And I call them helicopters. It makes them very good colonisers. The different maples have slightly different configurations of these. Sometimes they have three seeds in them and sometimes they're completely straight instead of in a V or a more open V. So look out for the different shapes of the seeds in the maples.
This is a wayfaring tree and you can see it's quite white and furry and underneath it's quite furry, softly furry on the top as well, serrated edge. This one does have white clusters of flowers and red berries later on in the autumn. It's actually an indicator of limestone. So if you're seeing wayfaring tree, it means you're in a limestone area. Quite textured, soft and furry, but the veins are quite complex as well. This tree is a witch elm and all the elms are roughly hairy so when you rub it it's roughly hairy. Can you hear it sounds like sandpaper? With the witch elm it often has these little uh, points on the leading edge and then usually a single point. This is also the witch elm so it just has its single point there. The veins are fairly parallel, but then they divide at the margins. And the other thing with elms is that the lobes are uneven. So this one's shorter than this one at the base of the leaf. You can see it more clearly here. Can you see that? So it's sort of asymmetrical. So the thing with the elms is roughly hairy and that asymmetrical lobe. So this can grow to quite a big tree and um, it's usually found in limestone chalk areas. So I hope you enjoyed that video about tree identification and found it useful. So you just need to go out and practice and uh, see what you can find. Maybe collect some leaves and make a little collection in a book of different uh, tree leaves that you've labelled and that's a really good way of revising as well. So thank you for joining us today and good luck with your tree ID.